Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, the Town of Islip Town Board meeting for the month of June. Uh, you know, tomorrow, everybody knows it's Flag Day, uh, a day when we celebrate the Second Continental Congress's adoption of the first U.S. national flag in 1777. So on Flag Day, we commemorate that historic event and recognize 246 years of patriotic significance behind the Stars and Stripes. So with that in mind, and the fact that we're having many Flag Day celebrations across the town, in fact, down the road tomorrow morning, uh, the kids in the elementary school is celebrating their annual Flag Day ceremony. But I'd like to ask everyone to please rise. And Councilman John Lorenzo, if you would, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. <clears throat> you know, we say it each month, but it just continues to amaze me how tremendously talented our young people are across our town. And we're so very fortunate to have some of the finest schools, clubs, and athletic groups filled with truly impressive scholars, musicians, artists, and athletes. So look around today. What do we see? I told them they look adorable in their outfits. So we're honored to recognize some of those wonderful students today. And among those outstanding students, we will start with the sweet Adelines from Central Islip. And I have to tell you, I want them to come forward. The Central Islip School Trouble Choir, the Sweet Adelines, recently competed at the prestigious Festival Disney competition, competing against talented choirs from across the nation the Sweet Adelines, directed by Teresa O'Connor, not only won the title of Best Treble Choir, but also received the Gold Mickey for overall Best Choir with a near-perfect score of 99. Ooh. So good, so good. <laughs> I think Neil Diamond would say that and be proud. So please join us in congratulating the Sweet Adelines on this fantastic victory making Central Islip High School and the town of Islip very, very proud. So now, can I ask you to come forward and do a little song for us to really start the meeting off? Okay, is that good? Excellent.
Yep. Let's hear it one more time for the Sweet Adelines and for their director, Teresa O'Connor. Uh, that's so sweet. So we have another group of honorees from Central Islip High School, and I want to thank uh, school board member Debbie Kavanaugh, who brought this to our attention. Uh, they have, oh, here we go. They've achieved outstanding success as scholar athletes. Stephanie Weiner, Brian Atwill, Leanna Tolan, and Tristan Lang. So our first honoree, Stephanie Weiner, has competed on the Central Islip High School varsity girls track team since seventh grade, on the varsity team since seventh grade, amazing. And has earned all leagues. Stephanie, come forward. She's earned all leagues. All county honors as well as an MVP award. Stephanie will soon be bringing her athletic abilities to the collegiate level for the State University at Albany where she will compete in the Division I long jump. Uh, long jump. So please join me in <laughs> congratulating Stephanie. So our next scholar athlete from Central Isaac High School is Leanna Tolan. Leanna has been a dedicated bowler for uh, Central Islip since eighth grade and was the first lady musketeer to place first in average for the Suffolk County girls varsity team. She has earned multiple accolades, including highest game at the New York State Tournament, second place with the Suffolk County All-Star team, losing by just one pin. Oh. And second place in the prestigious New York State Pepsi Youth Challenge where she was awarded a $1,000 scholarship. Let's congratulate Leanna Tolan. Leanna, come forward. Okay, and now we have two young men, and I'm going to ask the councilman from uh, Central Islip, Councilman Jim O'Connor, to read the next uh, honoree. Jim. Thank you, Supervisor. Next, from Central Islip High School, 
we are proud to honor Tristan Lang. <laughs> Tristan couldn't make it. Well, Tr it Tristan has been a prominent member of the Central Islip High School bowling team and has received the Doc Doctoro Sportsmanship Award, an award given to only one bowler in the county each year. He is also the proud owner of two prestigious awards for bowling a 300. That's a perfect game, and he did it twice. Please join me in recognizing Tristan. You're welcome, you're welcome. Congratulate Tristan for us. Our final honoree, Ryan Antwi. Ryan has been a Central Islip High School varsity track athlete throughout his high school career and is currently ranked second in the state for the triple jump. We have it, we have it. He, he, he has received all league, all county, and all state honors, as well as the coach, MVP, all academic athlete, and New York State Scholar Athlete Awards. Ryan also holds the title of Suffolk County Champion for the triple jump and will continue his track career in college, competing for Division I Cornell University. So extra, extra, extra read all about it. In breaking news, just this past weekend, Ryan proved victorious in the state championship. Please join me in recognizing and congratulating New York State champion, Ryan Antwi. Well, it goes on for Central Islip. We also have um, someone else to recognize. She is the valedictorian, but also, and that is Kelly Gossant, and she is the recipient of the very prestigious Amazon Future Engineer Scholarship. So join us in congratulating Kelly. I heard uh, someone shout out uh, that they're so proud of her. We're so proud of her. We're so proud of all of you. You really have done a wonderful, wonderful job. Congratulations to all today's honorees.
So we have a little, something a little bit different today. We, uh, we want to recognize one of our own at the town who has been recognized uh, for his efforts. And our final honoree today is someone that many of you are probably familiar with, especially if you're golfers. He is the pro at the Brentwood Country Club, and that's Doug Jansen. Doug, come on up. Doug is a very talented and dedicated golf professional who has earned the respect of his peers and all of us here at the town of Islip. Doug was recently named the recipient of the prestigious Metropolitan PGA 2022 Merchandiser of the Year Award uh, for the public sector for his excellence as a business person and merchandiser in the promotion of golf. And he really has done a wonderful job in promoting golf, especially encourage our young people to take up the sport because it truly is a sport you can you know, enjoy your entire lifetime. We're so fortunate to have Doug as part of the Town of Isop team for more than 30 years. And it's an honor <laughs> to recognize him today for the success, expertise, and recognition that he continues to bring to our town. And really, really helps not only uh, encourage those to come to the Brentwood Country Club where he is a pro, but also to our other two courses, Gull Haven and Central Islip, uh, and uh, Holbrook Country Club out in Holbrook. So please join me in congratulating Doug in appreciation for all of his efforts. I'd like to ask Doug to say a few words, because if you haven't been to the Brentwood Country Club, it really looks magnificent ever since the town board supported the initiative to uh, put the irrigation system at the golf course. It is absolutely beautiful, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Again, thank you very much for the recognition. I appreciate the honor. I uh, didn't see this one coming. Well, he didn't even know. I didn't even know. <laughs> right. Yeah, kind of sprung it on me, which is, right. I appreciate that. It's fine. Um, Wonderful today. The performance, excellent. Carol, wonderful. Really, really well done. Yeah, really, really well done. It's kind of hard to follow that up. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, you exactly. want to sing? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, but again, following through on what you said about the irrigation system, we put it in about four years ago, and it's really coming to fruition. But right now, as we speak, the golf course has never been in better condition. Well, all the way back to the 70s when it was private, it's not the condition it is right now. So if anybody out there is watching and they haven't visited the golf course recently, please swing by, see us. The golf course is really cr creating a huge uh, uh, re uh, opportunity for everybody in the town. The quality of the golf course is second to none in the area. Um, everybody's filing on all cylinders. Tom Owens' staff has been absolutely uh, instrumental in keeping us together. All the support we need in order to keep the product the way it is um, right now I slip golf is in fantastic hands. I thank you. Absolutely. And uh, I thank the board for that. And if anybody is out there who's even thinking about learning how to play the game or is interested in playing the game, we have what you need in the town of Islip. It's just extremely good right now. And uh, again, thank you for the award. Thank you. Appreciate thank you it. Very much, thank you. Really appreciate it. And check, uh, check the rec news because there are uh, golf programs for young and old alike. Uh, starting with, you know, young kids at our courses. So it's, it's really a great game. Uh, we have a couple of more announcements. I would uh, ask John Cochran, Councilman Cochran, who chairs our Veterans Advisory Board. I think you had an announcement to share yes, with us. Yes, Sue. Uh, on Friday afternoon, we have a hometown hero. Uh, uh, he's arriving at MacArthur Airport at 419, uh, Bay Shore Fireman, and he's a Navy uh, Petty Officer. So all welcome. Parking is free, and we want to welcome... Uh, sa sailor Eric Lehman back back home for his year deployment in Africa. So please show up, have fun, and, and, and wave the flag when he comes to the airport. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilman. And uh, thank you for your service.
Councilman Cochran is a 30-year veteran of the Navy, so I know it's gonna mean an awful lot when uh, you're there welcoming him home. So June's a very important month. Summer's about to begin. The school year is about to come to a close. There'll be graduation ceremonies, barbecues and parties, Father's Day celebrations, beach days, and much deserved time spent with our loved ones. But while we prepare to celebrate under the many freedoms granted to us by the flag we pledged to earlier this, uh, this afternoon, let us not forget that freedom should never be taken for granted. This coming Monday, June 19th is Juneteenth, our national holiday commemorating when the Union Armory, uh, Army Major General Gordon Granger rode into Galveston, Texas in June of 1865 and told slaves of their emancipation, more than two years after President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. So Juneteenth marks the end of slavery in the United States and is the first federal holiday to be approved since Martin Luther King Day. So on Monday, June 19th, like many places of work across the nation, town offices will be closed in observance of this holiday. And while the long weekends in warm weather are welcomed by all, let us not lose sight of the fight uh, for equality and the significance of this holiday and the long road of challenges that our friends, neighbors, and fellow African Americans have faced to gain this recognition. For our town is nothing if not for the wonderfully diverse people who call Islip their home. In the town of Islip, we are unified in our commitment to inclusivity and the celebration of all individuals. On that note, the month of June is also Pride Month, commemorating the Stonewall Riots and the watershed moments leading to the LGBTQ rights movement. Our town remains committed to championing the rights of all people, and we are proud to recognize Pride Month and the beautifully diverse individuals who make up our town and who enrich who we are. We are, as a town, are unified in our differences, and later this summer, on Saturday, August 12th, the town of Isla will be hosting our first ever Unity in the Community celebration at the Islip Grange in Sayville. This fun-filled international craft, cuisine, and cultural festival with all kinds of performing uh, groups will highlight the multiple ethnic, religious, and cultural groups that uh, we have in our town through various entertainment, food, merchandise, and more. So mark your calendars for Saturday, August 12th, and be sure to join us as we celebrate the unity of our community through the common vision of inclusivity, diversity, equity, and accessibility. So stay tuned for more information. Keep checking our website. And really, I thank all of you, especially the members of Sweet Adelines, for making this meeting start off on such a high note. We really appreciate you. Congratulations and thank you. I'd like to give these to you. Double wrong, Debbie. Two for two.
Good afternoon. Uh, we will move to uh, the agenda, the first item. We have two scheduled public hearings for the board's consideration. I'd ask the town clerk to please read the first hearing notice. Thank you. Hearing number one is to consider amending local law number three of 2023, which amends Islip to Town Code Chapter 68-324. Okay, we have uh, someone who has signed up to speak on this public hearing, Dr. Stephen Maloney. Thank you, Supervisor Carpenter. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Steve Maloney. I'm the superintendent of the Bayshore School District, um, 75 West Berkeley Street, Bayshore, New York. The public hearing is no doubt the result of the town of Islip attempting to make it possible for a charter school to open on Calden Avenue in central Islip. At a previous planning board hearing regarding the charter school's application for a special use permit within the central Islip plan development district, four school districts within the town of Islip made it clear that there was no allowance in the code for public schools to open within the planned development district. This is clearly a way for the concern to be quietly addressed and make it easier for the charter school special use permit to be considered. Today's potential change to the town code also raised the important question on whether the town code revision, uh, the South Shore Charter School is now required to submit a new special permit application to the planning board. I would hope that this question be addressed prior to any vote. It's important to note that strong opposition was raised to the planning board hearing regarding placing a school within the central Islip Plan Development District. The geographical area within the Plan Development District has gone to transformative revitalization in recent years. Specifically, it has been a recent repurposing and expanded commercial use of properties within the Plan Development District. The high traffic commercial nature of the area, particularly along Calden area, does not lend itself to an education use for elementary age children. I would like to note that it's particularly disturbing that the Bayshore School District was not given any notice or professional courtesy about this proposed change to the town, nor today's public hearing by the town of Islip, nor was any of the other school that is impacted by the proposed charter school this amendment aims to help. A later letter was sent to the supervisor, every town board member, uh, and the planning board members, the town attorney, by the four district superintendents within the town of Islip, making it clear there was opposition and they were interested parties and stakeholders in this matter. In addition, our attorney, Ed McCarthy, has had multiple discussions with assistant town attorney, William Garbarino, regarding this issue. It would seem that under these circumstances, East District should have been notified that this change is being considered and this hearing is being held. On behalf of the Bayshore School District, I strongly encourage the town, of, uh, town board to vote no on this proposed change in town code. Thank you. I dug and no other speakers on this. Before we proceed with this, I just ask the town attorney to give us a brief overview of what is actually happening here. Uh, you know, Michael Walsh, town attorney, town of Islip. I just reviewed uh, again the uh, proposed uh, ordinance change, and I don't see the words charter school anywhere in here. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm missing something or if there's an interpretation I'm missing. Also, it's my understanding that Mr. Barbarino ha has had lengthy conversations with the attorney that was referenced by the previous speaker uh, on several occasions, and it was made very clear that it's the, actually the New York State Department of Education that has seemingly not given us a very clear indication of what their expectation of this property is. So if, I, I think maybe, uh, uh, you know, perhaps, and I'd even recommend a scheduled meeting between yourself and myself and Mr. Barbarino, along with your attorney, and perhaps we could hash those issues out, because I know uh, Will is a very thorough attorney. He does his legal research, and I, I don't see any, um, investment or, or reason why this town board wouldn't follow the, recommend, the recommendations of the Department of Education. I just don't know what they are. If somebody could perhaps show them to me in writing, I, I would be very interested in seeing them. So perhaps maybe you ought to start with them before you come to this board. Uh, also, again, with, with respect to the term charter school, if somebody could point that out in the, in the ordinance, I, I'd be happy to look at it. I, that's up to the town supervisor. Well, we don't generally engage in a back and forth debate, but I just need to know, we need an overview of what this actually is asking us to do at this point. 
but it's my understanding this has nothing to do with us approving or disapproving a charter school, but really making some changes to the code. Is that correct? Okay. Does anyone have any questions on this? Okay. So is there a motion? Make a motion to close the public hearing, offer the resolution for its adoption. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It is approved. Okay. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you would please read the second hearing notice. And Dr. Maloney, please, uh, I would hope you would follow up with the uh, town attorney's suggestion and meet and have your questions clarified. Thank you. Madam Clerk? Thank you. S today's second hearing is to consider amending the Islip Town Uniform Traffic Code Schedule J Parking, Stopping, and Standing Regulations. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Are there any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion to close the hearing, public hearing, or to adopt the resolution. Uh, motion by Councilman Badrone, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? It is approved. We move then to um, item one on the agenda. Oh, no, sorry. We move to the public portion. We have a number of speakers who have signed up for the public portion. Again, this is an opportunity for you to bring forward issues of concerns that you have. The commissioners are here. So if there's something in particular, uh, they can discuss it with you um, outside. And um, I would just again ask that everyone please be respectful um, and kind. It would be much appreciated because everyone that's sitting up here really is trying to do what's best for the residents of our town. And uh, our first speaker, welcome back, Jim Schlau. Jim Schlau, 415 clipped. Uh, lady, I called her, Yvette Aguilera, Riverhead, town supervisor, you probably know her. I congratulated her. What we need is leadership like this here. Because she must have got, I told her what it's like in Central Islip and Brentwood. Place is a mess. Let's see. Many of the houses are loaded with garbage cans like that. And they're paying the same taxes I'm paying. In French, chez eux, c'est comme les people with poupées russes. On a ouvert un, et il y a un autre à l'intérieur. Okay? She, les maisons ne sont pas faites pour ça. Okay? I think you understand French, because I heard you say your father was from Canada. Il vient au Canada. This picture is retaliation. From the neighbors, everything's dead, okay? I don't know if you look at these pictures. This is two year old. Uh, you got this peppered all over the, all over the uh, town. Uh, commercial vehicles on people's property. Now why doesn't Loco do that? I use Loco, just generically, okay? Or, the phone company or anything else. Here's a, uh, this is still going on for I don't know how many years. Auto repair shop. And this truck has been in the backyard forever. You gotta do something. You can't let this go on like this. Because now you had to redraw the lines for Brentwood from what I understand. I saw it on Channel 2 News on, on, uh, on uh, uh, YouTube. She couldn't even speak English. And you're giving them, you're giving them special whatever. You, what you got going on here is you got people who are working the system. That's what you got. All these migrants come here to work, and I think he's teaching them how to work the system because they're getting away with murder. There's no rules. Remember, the people that came to, were in this town when I moved here fought in World War I and World War II, and the place was a respectable town, beautiful, just like Sayville and Oakdale. Imagine what happens if this element that's here gets in there. And how are you keeping it from happening there? Even your neighborhood is beautiful. It has a little crazy uh, euphemism that people say when I say West Islip. They call it White Islip. I'm not prejudiced, but that's one of the things going around. Can you give me these pictures? Thank you. 
Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Schlau. Next speaker, Mrs. Petrosian. Oh, uh, Petrosini. Petrosini. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mrs. Vincent Petrosini. I, re I live at 30 Windermere Drive in Holbrook. I am a resident of the town of Islip and the state of New York. Today, my request to you concerns local laws and ordinances. In trying to decipher the codes on renting private residential swimming pools, I was left with the vague interpretation that is why I am here. Nowhere did I find a specific reference in allowing this action nor prohibiting it. I ask you to please explain where in Chapter 68 zoning there is a, a provision to permit homeowners to rent their pools in residential neighborhoods. The closest understanding I found was in Chapter 68 zoning, Article 1, uh, subsection 68-3, under word usage and definitions. Note well the term permitted use. Legal non-conforming use shall not be considered or permitted use despite the fact that it may be allowed to continue. Confusing? To me, it is vague. I do not believe it's right for someone to disrupt the living space of another for their personal financial benefit. I believe it is wrong to allow up to 20 strangers to infringe on the lives of senior citizens that are just trying to enjoy their backyards in the summertime, being hibernated during the whole winter, without music or some two feet away from the property line. That is what is occurring in the town of Islip, to my dismay. And it will occur every weekend, different people, different carloads of people each day while I'm trying to enjoy my weekend and my senior year is retired, no, I got to listen to music I may not want to enjoy, as others do. It's an infringement. I would appreciate an answer to the following, though. What designation of district is for uh, 30 Windermere Drive? Like, is it resident A, BAA? I don't know. Where's the legality of renting out swimming pools in the town of Islip Code? Was there a public hearing on this issue and a vote? If so, when? Does municipal use convert to a single attached family dwelling, since the town of Islip is a municipality within the state of New York? With websites like Swimply, that's S-W-I-M-P-L-Y, which is headquartered in Los Angeles and was launched in 2018 by a 25-year-old who made like $160 million already. Ah, there is no hope for residents who want to enjoy the fruits of their labor during our beautiful summer months. Please consider banning these income generators and allow Long Islanders to relax and enjoy their lives in a reasonable pursuit of happiness. I have other things. There are other towns that have banned it. I want to know how I can go forward, if it's a law, to change it. And I thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for coming down, Mrs. Petrosini. I would, I'm going to be, based on the issues that you brought forward, ask the town attorney to have someone in the department research that how our code is applicable if it's not to address some ways that we could make those changes. So thank you. You're welcome. Uh, next speaker, Debbie Cavanaugh. Hello. Thank you for this before. Appreciate you recognizing our kids at CI. Um, here are two things. One, the trees from the Faro project, there are about 25 of them still sitting in root balls on Carlton Avenue that Faro never planted. It is now the Fairfield property. Again, they're still sitting there. If they've been there two years in root, root, root balls. There are about 25 pine trees that need to be planted. I'd like the town to make sure they get planted ASAP. Second, I was unaware that we were having a public hearing on the charter school. Everybody on this board, including the town attorney, and everybody else received a five-page letter from me. In that five-page letter, I stated, and I did give Ella the 
um, link to the State Department on where I got my information from, on what was to be in the charter school, what a school is required by the state, so on and so forth. And if you need to hear the word charter school, I suggest that you ask for the videotape from the Central Islip School District or even the Satrum School District. They both hold public hearings on the charter school that says charter school with the application that the school district has gotten back. And if I have to, I'll make sure you get sent the memo that has their application that does say charter school. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Uh, next speaker, uh, Ahmed Mitchell L. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'd like to give honor to all of the officers of this chamber first. I didn't know I was going to be here, so please excuse my attire. You're well, welcome. Thank you. I got a call about 1130. I was doing a radio show at Stony Brook, and I got a call from somebody saying, hey, there's a town board meeting today. Why don't you come down? He hears me complain about things like traffic and safety in the neighborhood. I would just like to uh, know, uh, in my neighborhood this morning, when I was leaving to go to the station, I'm driving down my street, and uh, we have a lot of four-way stop signs. A guy comes blowing through there about 50 miles an hour, doesn't stop at any of them. They're blowing the stop. I can't get out of my driveway because the stop on the next corner from me. Uh, I didn't give out my, my address, right? Do you need that? Okay. Yeah, you have it. It's Ferndale Boulevard. It's there, right, and yes. Is that where it is, that intersection? I, I'm, I'm coming out on... Um, out of my driveway and from Olive Street, they blow the stop sign and there's cars, there's so many cars parked on um, the street. By the time I'm out there, it's like it's a life-threatening event getting out of my driveway. Uh, the other corner, if I'm coming home, the cars are parked so right up to the corner. Again, by the time you nose up to see coming out, somebody's you know, speeding through the, uh, the neighborhood. There's a lot of speeding. They're blowing the stop signs like crazy. I yell at my own kids who are grown people to stop because there's little, I mean, there's a lady across the street from me has three little children, just had a newborn. We're gonna wait till one of these children get killed. The kids can't play in the streets. I grew up playing in the street in Central Isa with the same address. The kids can't play in the streets. It's Islip Avenue, 111. They detour off of Islip Avenue to come down our street and do 50 miles an hour down the street because, well, Islip Avenue is torn up. It's all potholes. I don't know who, whose uh, jurisdiction uh, Route 111 is. Not ours. Okay, but, you know, our street has been repaved. It's beautiful. So everybody's coming down there. It's Suffolk County, actually. Okay, I, I'll, I'll have to get on them. Uh, you know, because our, our streets are pretty smooth right now. So a lot of people are detouring down our street to avoid the other streets, and it's, it's dangerous. Uh, I really came down here to see what's going on. I didn't come to contribute much, but I have a lot of concern about the safety. And uh, I mean, do you, I know the police department has quotas. Why don't they just come and, and collect some money by bagging these people? Somebody, please, because I would like to see my grandchildren be able to play in the street like I did. Thank you. You're very welcome. Could you just tell me again what intersections in particular the stop signs are on? Because what I'll do is see a letter goes to the precinct and ask them to increase enforcement on Ferndale, okay. in particular those intersections. Um, I'll give you Locust and Ferndale, Apple and Ferndale, Olive, uh, Palm Street and Ferndale. I'm going in order from south to north. Palm Street and Ferndale, Olive Street. All right, Street. so those intersections coming from the east side. Uh, uh, east and west. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, one morning I was uh, driving to Spur Drive down, uh, going south on Ferndale. I think it's somebody who's behind me because I stopped. He decides to pass me two cars in a row wow. and uh, blow the stop sign at about 50 miles an hour. Time for citizen's arrest. No, only kidding. <laughs> only kidding. Um, no, I will do that. We'll send it to the precinct. And also, I know the commissioner is here. 
the commissioner is here and I'm gonna ask him to send traffic safety because sometimes if we could put a sign that uh, no parking from here to corner, it helps uh, increase the visibility as you approach the intersection. Yeah, well, I was talking to another my neighbor of mine that lives right on the corner and she's scared to death half yeah. the time. We'll do that, we'll send traffic safety out, thank you. Next uh, speaker, Diane Stein. I, it's Diana, Di I'm sorry. Diana Stein, I'm uh, 256 Evergreen Avenue, Central Islip. I'm here, I'm the treasurer of the Central Islip Historic Society. For those that don't know, it's the old Methodist church building. We're trying to turn it into a museum. The county um, did not refund our grant. We usually get a grant for $5,000 from them every year. We didn't get last year and we didn't get this year. Um, I'm trying to get that money back. We tried to do a fundraiser for a carnival using the Gullhaven property. We submitted an application in May and we got turned down because it was the first time doing it, but we paid a $500 fee and I was told by the clerk that we can't get the town cash our money and we can't get that money back. Our insurance is over $4,000 a year for the buildings and it's all local donations. So I would number one ask if we could get that money back town clerk um, told me she'd be willing to um, credit us for next year, so that's another reason why I'm here, because if that's gonna happen, I just want it on the record. And my other question is, last year we did receive funding um, from the town for COVID relief of $5,000. So um, I, as of December 22, I know that the town still had $35 million of unspent COVID funds and I had called to see if we could get another 5,000 this year because we're just starting to get our fundraising back up and going. And I was told that since we got last year, we weren't allowed to get any more. So I'm asking the board to reconsider that. Um, and that's all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Diana, for coming down. Uh, next speaker, Andy Cross. And once again, I'm still here about the NYS real property tax law on my tax bill. Although it's down this year, it should have been down the last five years because as you said, it's tied to the price of housing and the price of housing went up, didn't go down. When the tax went up 41% in one year, after a no tax hike year. Is this going up another 41% next year? Or could it beat the 51% the highway tax went up and get the record for the highest tax rate increase next year? Last year I was told the highway department was supposed to repave my whole neighborhood like they did in other neighborhoods but they only did about six blocks. What happened? Why was my neighborhood only repaved once in 30 years when across Bayshore Road in West Islip, it was done two and three times? And the whole neighborhoods were done instead of piecemeal like we're getting in once in 30 years. How could you let the monstrosity five-story apartment building in Bayshore where most people who moved here came here to get away from that stuff. How could you approve this? How come we're paying for a zoning department and not using it? The town, by, the town board overrides them probably for political donations or political connections how much tax money would be saved by getting rid of, the, rid of the zoning department and have the town board do the zoning for the politically connected friends? How could Mr. Cochran vote for this and say he represents Bayshore? The amount of money 
people of Bayshore are going to have to pay and increase school taxes and fire taxes is going to be forcing everybody to go bankrupt. Why is the town giving the tax incentives to apartment buildings to subsidize the rent of the people coming in? Where's all the parking going to be for all these cars? Is this the future slums of Bayshore? That's it. Anybody else? I didn't think so. Thank you, Mr. Cross. Uh, the next speaker, the next speaker um, is tied to one of the board up cleanups, so I think we'll hold off. Uh, Cheryl Wilkowski, are you here? So we'll wait till we get to that particular resolution. Okay, thank you. There are no other cards uh, to be signed. A motion to close the public portion. Thank you, by Councilman Cochran. Second. By Councilman Lorenzo, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed, it is closed. <laughs> okay, we will move to the agenda. Uh, before we do, I just, uh, for the record, want to clarify, one of the speakers referred to the uh, apartment building being constructed in Bayshore. Uh, it is a four-story structure, not five. Okay, uh, one, is the meeting of the Town of Islip Industrial De Development Agency. I'd ask Mr. Wolzer to come forward or Mr. Hemingway. We have a motion to convene as the uh, Town of Islip Industrial <laughs> Development Agency. Motion by Councilman Cochran, second. second. By Councilman Guadron, all those in favor, Aye. opposed, we are convened, a quorum being present. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, and members of the agency board. My name is Brad Hemingway. I am Deputy Director for the Industrial Development Agency, located at 40 Nassau Avenue in Islip, New York. Uh, a few items for your consideration today. First is approval of the minutes from our last board meeting on May 16th, 2023. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Next is a, an inducement resolution between the agency and 161 East LLC. Uh, this is for the construction of a 20-unit multifamily housing development in Bayshore, close proximity to the South Shore University Hospital. Are there any questions? I have one. Motion. Do we have a motion? Motion by Councilman Cochran. Second. Second. By Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Next item I have uh, is a resolution authorizing the modification and extension of a pilot agreement uh, for the establishment of a master project agreement for 2250 Jackson Avenue Associates in Brentwood, New York. Any questions? Motion? Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Uh, next one is a modification and extension of a pilot agreement and the establishment of another master project agreement for Pilgrim East in Brentwood, New York. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman Cochran, second. second. By Councilman Lorenzo, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Uh, next resolution is an authorizing resolution for a uh, project induced at last month's meeting. Uh, this is for uh, O.L. Coventry, located at 726 Eastview Drive in Central Islip. Any questions? I'll make that motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Next is an authorizing resolution for a project uh, also induced at last month's uh, meeting between the agency and 00. Ray John LLC in Bayport. Thank you. Any questions? Motion, Motion by Councilman uh, Guadron. Second. Second. By Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? No. Opposed? No. We have four in favor, one opposed. The motion passes. Item seven. Lastly, an authorization. I, I mean eight, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, authorizing resolution uh, for a project induced at last month's meeting between the agency and 33 Ray John, uh, also in Bayport. Any questions? Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman uh, Cochran. All those in favor? No. Four in favor, one in opposition. The motion carries. And there are Nothing no further. other no other items. Come before us. We'll make a motion to adjourn. No other motion by Councilman Guadron, second. second. By Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? It, we stand adjourned. Thank you very much, Thank you. Fred. Uh, we move to item two on the agenda. 
town board or position of cleanup or secure certain properties in the town of Islip. Uh, Jeff. Good afternoon, Madam Supervisor, members of the town board and the town clerk. Uh, this is Jeffrey Panacci, assistant town attorney, 655 Main Street in Islip, New York. I do have four matters on for your consideration here today. Number one is to clean up the premises located at 71 West Shore Road in Oakdale. On this vacant property, there now exists high grass and overgrown vegetation on the east, north, and southwest portions of the property, as well as litter and debris, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was provided to all known persons with a property interest in this premises. Are there any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed, approve. Number two is the board of premises located at 101 Legrand Street in Brentwood. On this vacant and unsecured property, there now exists mis a missing cellar window located on the north side of the dwelling, allowing access to its interior, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was provided to all known persons with the property interest in this premises. Um, Jeff, we did have someone uh, who wanted to speak on this issue. Her card seems to have disappeared. Yes. And if you want to just come forward and put your name on the record, please. Uh, hi, yes. Cheryl Kotowski from Knuckles, Kalamazinski, and Manfro. Uh, the, we had the notice and we secured the premises. We, I just spoke with um, Jeff. Yes. And he told me that the, we neglected one window and I would like time to go back and uh, fix that window. Um, that seems to be the only remaining issue with, with the Okay, well generally what we do in situations like that, we'll go ahead and pass this um, and we will delay going out there for at least two weeks, so it'll give you time to take care of it. Perfect, thank you. Do I have a motion? Sure. Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. Number three, to clean up the premises located at 174 Jefferson Avenue in Brentwood. On this vacant property, there now exists high grass and overgrown vegetation located on the north and west sides of the dwelling, as well as various items of litter and debris located within the rear yard. Uh, which constitutes a nuisance and presents a fire safety and health hazard. Notice of this hearing was provided uh, to all known persons with property interest in this premises. Jeff, I have a question for you. I'm just looking at the pictures, and there's a picture of a shed that I have to wonder if it was permitted and constructed legally. Uh, if when you're doing whatever you're doing, if that or not, would you remove that? Uh, I, if, if when they go to investigate the property, if it was um, constructed illegally, I, I don't believe that they would remove it, but Chief Investigator Mistretta is here, so I don't know if maybe he could provide further information with respect to All right, that. I'll check on it. I, I was just curious. We'll go forward with this. Do you have a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Garcon. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. Thank you. And number four has actually been withdrawn because it's now in compliance, so that's all I have. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will move now to item uh, three on the agenda. Are the appropriation transfers, are there any questions? We're hearing none. Motion. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed, approved. Item four, the bid awards. Uh, any questions? Motion by Councilman Cochran, second, second. by Councilman uh, Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Option year resolutions are item five. Any questions? Is there a motion? Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item six, authorization of the town clerk to advertise for public hearing to consider enacting local law four, establishing chapter 69 of the Isaac Town Code entitled Bureau of Administrative Education, uh, adjudication rather. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, I'll I'll second. A motion. Uh, pardon me? I'll join in a motion. Okay, we have a dual motion <laughs> and, a, and a second. All those in favor, opposed, it is approved. Item seven, meeting of the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone. Uh, Mr. Hemingway, you look just like Mr. Walter. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon again. 
uh, different board this time. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, members of the Foreign Trade Zone Board. My name is Brad Hemingway. I'm the Executive Director at the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone Authority, located at One Trade Zone Drive in Ronkonkoma, New York. Two items for your consideration today. First is approval of the minutes from January 24th, 2023, the meeting of the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone Board. Any question on the minutes? A motion. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, a motion to convene the uh, Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone, uh, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor, Aye. opposed, we are convened, quorum being present. Item two, we have a motion to approve the minutes. Uh, second. Second. By a motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman Gardone. All those in favor, opposed, it is approved. Item three. Item three, also authorization for the Town of Islip Foreign Trade Zone Authority to use PKF O'Connor Davies. Uh, for professional auditing services for uh, year-end 2022. Motion. We have a motion by Councilman Guadrone, uh, second by Councilman uh, Lorenzo. All those in favor, opposed, we have one favor, one refusal. The motion carries and... I'll just go back to the motion for the minutes, if we could. Um, yeah. Sure. Councilman Cochran. Go back to the minutes um, from the January 24th meeting. Jack O'Connor was a great guy. You remember Jack? Yes, I do. But I'm Jim O'Connor, but that's okay. <laughs> we will make note of that and make the correction, Councilman. Have a great day. Uh, no too. further items before the. Thank you so much. Did we uh, close the meeting? We have a motion to close. No other business. Motion by Councilman Guardone, second by Councilman O'Connor. Uh, all those in favor, opposed, Aye. we stand adjourned. Item eight. Authorization supervisor entering into agreement with HL Contracting for Construction Services at Long and MacArthur Airport. Any questions? Hearing none, motion. Yes. Motion by Councilman Cochran, second, second by Councilman uh, O'Connor. All those in favor, opposed, approved. <laughs> Item nine uh, Authorization of the Town Clerk to advertise a public hearing to consider amending the Town of Islip Uniform Traffic Code. I'll make that motion. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor, opposed, approved. Um, item 10, authorization for the supervisor to execute an amendment to the professional services agreement with Nelson and Pope to include the design plans for a cooling and heating system for a town hall west auditorium. Any questions? Hearing none, motion. Motion, motion by Councilman Cochran, second. second. By Councilman O'Connor, all those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Um, item 11, authorization for the supervisor to enter into an agreement with Luminescence Production Services, LLC, to provide outdoor movie nights at various town parks and beaches. Any questions? Hearing none, motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Um, 12, authorization for the supervisor to enter into an agreement with Big Apple Valet Corp DBA First Class Valet to provide parking services at the 2023 Apple Festival. Are there any questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, we don't charge for parking, no. but yeah. there'll be a fee for the valet service. Uh, I understood in my briefing that there was going to be no fee to the residents who right. come, come and Right, right. We don't charge for parking. parking. We don't yeah. charge admission. That's, that's what I was told. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, motion? Motion. Motion by Councilman Guadron, second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item 13, authorization of supervisor to enter in various agreements for programs to be held throughout the town. Uh, and thank you so much to the Parks Department for the great job they do putting these programs together, the camps and everything. Um, I think we're probably totally subscribed to everything. This is a godsend to so many working parents. Some of the programs start at 8.30 in the morning and go to almost 6 at night, giving, you know, parents an opportunity to have their kids in a safe environment, you know, during the work day. So uh, thank you to everyone for, for all of your efforts. Uh, are there any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman Guadron. Second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Town Board approval uh, is item 14 permitting Youth Enrichment Services and ISIS Group of Hope to host drop-off sites for various town locations to collect 
non-perishable food items for local food pantries. I'll make that motion. Second by Councilman Cochran. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Uh, item 15, special events. Uh, again, there's a lot happening, including block parties are back on the agenda. Uh, motion? Motion. motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman Lorenzo. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item 16, authorization for town clerk to advertise for public hearing on the transfer of property located at 91 Jefferson Street, East Islip, under the Town of Islip CDA housing program. I'll make that motion. Second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item 17, town board approval to officially change the name of Sergeant Greg B. Gareppi Memorial Park to Islip, in Islip Terrace to the Veterans Memorial at the Sergeant Greg B. Gareppi Park. Motion by Councilman Cochran, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. Item 18, authorization of supervisor to execute any and all documentation related to a lease agreement between the Brentwood Water District and the Suffolk County Water Authority for a property located at 10 Carroll Street, Brentwood. Any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman uh, Guadrone. Second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed? Approved. <laughs> Item 19, authorization for supervisor to consent to the assignment and assumption of that certain lease agreement with, by, and between the town of Islip as lessor and West Sable Boat Basin LLC as lessee. Motion by Councilman Lorenzo, second by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 20, authorization of supervisor to enter an agreement with JVC Broadcasting to produce on-air radio and on-site appearances. Uh, any questions? Motion. Motion by Councilman O'Connor, second by Councilman uh, Cochran. All those in favor? Opposed, approved. Item 21, acceptance of donation of area summer toys from Brentwood principals and supervisors organization to be offered to children in attendance at the annual 2023 Summer Splash Pool Party at Roberto Clemente Pool and Spray Park. I'll make that motion. Second okay. by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. Item 22, authorization for the supervisor to execute a professional services agreement with COMPLY for the administration of alcohol and drug testing services for town of, uh, uh, town of Islip employees. Are there any questions? Motion. Hearing none, motion by Councilman Guadron. Second Aye. by Councilman O'Connor. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Approved. And I believe that is the end of the agenda. Motion to adjourn by Councilman Cochran. Second, Second by Councilman Guadron. All those in favor? Opposed? We stand adjourned. Thank you very much.